Welcome to the Jeffrey Method of Painting. Welcome back. Here at the studio, I'd like to do a little demonstration. Again, using that we want to make ourselves more creative or allow more creativity to flow by practicing a limited brush palette. And also one of the most important aspects of painting, the power to simplify what we see and create a convincing illusion to the viewer of what we are trying to capture or portray. Here I try to go a little bit out of my dark line to give a little bit more boldness. And that's why I love demonstrating this because it opens new ideas and possibilities to other artists for their own works that they'd like to practice or have a time not only just to be painting all the time but also the time that is needed very much for practice. And this is really very enjoyable. As I'm doing this Allo, I'm thinking of two things. How to convey to the viewer that they're looking at a three-dimensional object. And how to use as least as possible strokes of my brush. And uh, the use of just this very simple, simple palette of black and green. And as I took this green out of the tube, I did have to put a little bit of red into it in order to reduce the intensity of the green. In my shadow areas, I try to capture an outside line just on top of the black. So at a viewing distance, the viewer will see it in the light that I want them to. Here we go. As we come to the end. Trying to get a little thicker as we come to the bottom. And one of my favorites. It always just gives me a little quirky feeling. When I do the last leaf like that. <laughs> a nice wiggly one just to really bring it into conformance with the uh, true nature where nothing is uh, even, mostly it's at odds. So here trying to use one color just to bring that dimension to the aloe. An exciting portion of painting the lower part of the aloe is that it really brings the sunlight into the painting. As I go I try to follow carefully first the silhouettes that are there by enhancing the silhouette by putting of this very much lighter almost pure yellow ochre from the tube onto the canvas. Notice how I really try to bring a focus to the front portion of the lower half of the aloe with this yellow ochre by keeping all the leaves really close together. As I come to the halfway portion, I try to put a few less and I feel already that my illusion is quite complete with the dead leaf debris. So in the front portion of the aloe I've really tried to take it straight off the palette. Always having my palette knife. Keep your brush sharpened. I roll the palette knife to the left and to the right. And as I offload, I use the thick paint 
to exonerate the front portion to show the illusion of light using only one color but also the consistency of that color being very important when it comes to creating a convincing illusion um, I'm so proud of that one and in the next episode we will continue with the uh, mountainscapes and uh, skyscapes I'm sure that will be very interesting for those who would like to see a very simple way uh, that even an absolute beginner would be able to accomplish uh, just using it as a technique for practicing our brush control which is very important and you can see that little glow area just by adding some of that yellow ochre directly to the rocks it's created a wonderful uh, three-dimensional illusion um, the only thing I would add next to this uh, layer is something that's also very important as you come into shadows at a certain time of day you will see that in the shadow the color seems to be warmer and a little bit more radiant and uh, that's when I always bring into my shadow area very slight starting the rule of shadow here is basically when you're practicing this just to get the hang of it is that not more than a third should be in highlight you know if you can help it um, obviously it depends what you are trying to portray and the reason why you are either over enhancing or under enhancing your highlights but uh, here you can see the effect uh, firsthand uh, of just bringing in a little bit of this darker color into there. It's created a very nice feeling. A uh, little naughty trick of mine over blobbing. Okay, there we go. So you can see, look at that lovely dead kind of feeling. It's looking nice and um, very true to uh, convincing aloe. And uh, yes, obviously there's a lot more that could be done. Many more colors can be added and that's what uh, should be done. Uh, but just to show you in its most basic uh, uh, elements uh, what the aloe should be looking like by now uh, after you learn to silhouette and then the next portion practicing your negative spaces which is a challenge you will always meet in everything when we do skies, when we do mountains. Um, uh, when we do foreground it all comes down to your ability to navigate through negative spaces being able to shut off in your mind lighter colors from darker colors in order to be able to see on a two-dimensional plane uh, the 3d and enhance it so i believe uh, landscape uh, is the greatest tool to get you all round ready uh, whether you're talking about being a portrait artist or whatever you'd like to focus on a landscape is an awesome foundation where you can actually learn from nature uh, put, putting the time in to really go and sit out there and see how light really affects objects colors different times of day and understanding the science of that light the length of uh, wavelengths and what our atmosphere does uh, as far as refraction and uh, refraction of color also so uh, I just really believe that uh, it's important and in order to be a spontaneous creative I think it's really important if we do that. Thank you so much. Before you go, please remember to like and subscribe and happy painting everyone! <laughs>